you ever come back from vacation and you feel like you kind of see your life with fresh eyes, right? It seems like every time I come back from some time away, something interesting happens. As soon as I get home, I see my life with almost an outsider's perspective, right? The clutter, the routines, the unnecessary complications, the narrowing of focus, all of them just seem to stand out in stark relief. These vacations have a way of giving us fresh perspective. And this little insight can really inform how we think about planning actually for retirement too. It's not really about where you go or what you do when you do go. The data says it's about something else entirely. Something that you got to actually understand if you really want to squeeze all the juice out of that next trip. So in this video, while I'm away on vacation here, I'll share some personal thoughts on this post-vacation clarity that I think we can all benefit from, as well as some data on how multi-generational travel fits into this, which is an emerging trend. And by the end, I'll give you three ideas on how to really maximize your travel plans. One age group has really caught on to these ideas, grabbing kind of them by the horns, but I think they're right. So I'll share a little bit about that too. So as I film this, I'm actually on vacation here in the Canadian Maritimes, here with my family, my wife and kids. Uh, we're gonna be whirlwind traveling Halifax, Lewinburg, Peggy's Cove, Cabot Trail, PEI, Bay of Fundy, Cavendish Beach, all the spots. We always try to eat our own cooking, right? Practice what we preach. And knowing we only have so many summers with our kids, we really try to kind of intentionally spend that time together to make the most of the time that we've got. The thing about vacations is that they just have this unique ability for clarity and insight. The American Psychological Association found that there's actually this short window of time. It's actually just a few days after a trip, which provides this hit of clarity. Now, why does that happen? When you travel, you often spend time reconnecting in nature, like I'm doing here, right? You live a few days or maybe even a few weeks without some of the things that you previously thought you couldn't live without. You meet people who maybe don't have a full RRSP or TFSA, and you know what? Sometimes they even seem happier. And if you pause long enough, this can actually raise some interesting questions, right? Like, why do we always eat the same thing for dinner? Do I like sports or am I just bored? Why? Am I holding on to so much stuff? What do I actually need to be happy? And this change in perspective can often be the catalyst for positive change in our lives, right? Just start by questioning the way that you're doing things. What feels overly complicated or maybe just too much? Sometimes the problem isn't something big, but just small areas in your life that have become cluttered and maybe would benefit from being simplified. By the way, if we haven't ever met, my name is Steve Willems. I'm a wealth advisor with the Willems Wealth Planning Group way back over in BC. Uh, we help people optimize their finances by building income plans, investment plans, and retirement plans that hopefully all work together to have you pay in less tax. I've got three ideas on how you can bake more travel into your retirement plans, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But first, one interesting thing that we've been seeing some folks really dig into, and to their credit, are baby boomers. That post-vacation clarity, right? They're really digging it and looking for more of it. Like seriously, they perhaps are single-handedly keeping Europe out of recession at this point. Uh, this article from the Wall Street Journal uh, I just saw recently looked at this, how kind of free spending visitors are essentially keeping some of those Southern European economies just humming. And by looking at the number of people passing through the TSA security these days, the numbers this year are truly off the charts. But what's interesting here is not just the volume of the travel, the massive surge of that kind of post-COVID travel in aggregate, but who these folks are choosing to travel with and why. You see, there's been talk for years about the great wealth transfer, right? This $84 trillion chunk of money that's going from older silent generation folks and aging boomers down to young Gen Xers, millennials, and Gen Z adult children over the next 20 years. This wealth is absolutely going to move in the traditional sense, but many aging boomers have other ideas too. And it's right along these lines. They are more and more giving while living and specifically finding and funding kind of shared family travel and experiences that they and their families can actually enjoy today together. The Family Travel Association's 2023 US Family Travel Association survey mouthful, of 3,300 parents and grandparents indicated that about 50% of those surveyed have taken a multi-generational trip in just the last three years. And more than half, 54%, particularly grandparents, report being the primary planner and organizer of those trips. A full 50% indicate that they'll pay for the trips with children and grandkids, and about 48% 
say they'll share the costs as a family. It's interesting, only 1% are reporting the kids covering the cost for their parents. Now, for many of these aging boomers, the travel isn't really about the trip, though, right? Like, it's about the gift of shared experiences, of memories together as a family, right, of, of bonding. And certainly, as those with kind of financial resources age, they're going to cherish even more this bonding time right, with their family, experiencing new sights, smells, foods, adventures, right, with the people that they love. At their older age, it's a irreplaceable for them. It's an exchange of dollars for memories that just can't be matched by any other return on a financial statement. Now, before the millennials and the Gen Zs go pack their bags and go travel with mom and dad, one other interesting anecdote from the data pops up. In some cases, they may actually have to wait a little bit longer because according to this AARP study, Another emerging trend is what's called skip gen travel. And that's where they found that 61% of grandparents reported kind of being interested in vacationing with their grandkids alone and skipping this middle generation entirely. Now that's just a stated wish. The rubber needs to meet the road there, but interesting nonetheless and kind of surprising for me. So now what can you do to bake this all into your retirement plan? Well, I've got three ideas. Now first, just start planning ahead. This trip that we're on here with our family right now, we started planning this one about eight months ago. If this is intriguing for you and your financial plan shows that you've got kind of some flexibility to think creatively, I'd suggest you just take the next smallest step, right? Whatever that might be for you. Maybe it's setting a budget, might be brainstorming destinations or coordinating schedules figure out who you'd want to be joining you on this trip, right? Lives can get especially busy as your adult kids parent their own kids. So this isn't just the kind of thing that you can kind of spring on anyone last minute. And number two, I give some thought to that right destination. Pull up Airbnb, look at kind of a two week rental of a home somewhere. And I'd suggest widening out that search parameter, right? Look in Normandy, France or Lisbon, Portugal or Huntington Beach, California or where I'm at here right now in Hubbard's, Nova Scotia. Envision the space, the people in the space, right? Feel yourself kind of get captured by or intrigued by this. And third, just to give thought on how you'll create balance. A traveling with a group, especially traveling with family, needs to have a balance of kind of group activities and individual downtime. So maybe think about ways to make sure that everyone gets the most out of the trip without just feeling overwhelmed. I suggest you delegate some coordinating of those responsibilities maybe to other family members as well so that they can kind of take some ownership in creating some of those plans, right? Like co-creation in a sense. It's always a better way to have them kind of earn buy-in and neutralize any kind of dissenters or complainers that might be in the mix. So just a few reflections today about that idea of kind of post-vacation clarity and why it seems so many boomers are hot onto this concept of travel generally, but also just multi-generational travel. And we we try to do this personally. Uh, we're blessed to have created some pretty fun memories going down to Arizona with my folks, right? My kids, grandparents. Got an annual tradition of going somewhere similar with my wife's side as well. And often we reflect on those memories at the end of the year, right? They're often highlights or the hits, right? Those are the moments that kind of stand out in our minds. Even years later, it's, it's truly a gift. I'm curious if you've ever uh, come back from vacation and had some of those ahas, right? Maybe led to a new direction in your own life or if you've had success traveling with adult kids or, or parents, I would certainly love to hear your experience down in the comments below. That's all for now though, uh, some travel reflections while traveling. Uh, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.